So why were people jumping on an elephant? <laughs> Stay tuned to find out in the later part of this video. But first, <laughs> comedy relief by mommy. <gasps> One hen, two ducks, three squawking geese, four limerick oysters, five corpulent porpoises, six pairs of Don Alverzo's tweezers, 7,000 Macedonians in full battle array, eight brass monkeys from the ancient sacred groups of Egypt. <laughs> Nine apathetic, sympathetic, diabetic old men on roller skates with a marked propensity toward... Oh, I just... Procrastination and sloth. <laughs> Ten. Lyrical, spherical, diabolical denizens of the deep who haul stalls around the quibby of the quo, the quay, all at the same time. What does that have to do with education? I have no idea, but that's what our talk is about tonight. Education. So... <laughs> See, you just start saying this and they start laughing. <laughs> okay, so why is that part of education? Uh, why is that even mentioned in this discussion of education? Because I learned that in eighth grade. And it means a lot. We to had you. to. I can still say it. 30 is it obvious that she was public school. 20, <laughs> what does it mean? To it you? means I have no idea who Don Alverso is and why we're talking about his tweezers, but I'm still talking about it 25 years later. <laughs> I don't have to learn any poems about Macedonians <laughs> and, <laughs> and brass and monkeys. No, no. <laughs> there was confusion of what I said earlier, but I was talking about the brass monkeys. <laughs> so anyway, <clears throat> today is July 15th. <laughs> Friday. Friday. You're supposed to say Friday, July 15th. Friday, July no, July 15th, comma, 2022. Or you could write it as 7 15 22. Unless you're from Europe. Unless you're from Europe. It's 7 15 22. No. It's sorry, one five. No, sorry, 1 5 dash 7. Dash I know what it looks two. like when somebody writes to me in Europe. Me too, okay. <laughs> yes. Home education. Okay. So, redeem this video. we will uh, redeem this video. Okay, first we're going to go through a quick what we did today, and then we'll tell you why people are jumping on an elephant and home education. We'll probably have to turn the light on during this video, but right now we got light. Tell us when that happens. Okay, so, first, what did we do today? We got up. We had sourdough pancakes, which Josiah was really excited about because he had been off gluten for a while, and we were introducing sourdough, so he was very excited about those. Which I just ate. He just ate sourdough pancakes. Um, and gluten. <laughs> So what was I going to say? We had that. After breakfast, we went outside. We took Josiah's crawling pads outside and he crawled. He took a long time this morning. He was being very slow. Then we went and hooked up our van because our van here in Maine, we need inspections and they're pretty picky about what they take. Like really? Like really picky. Like we've been to states where we're surprised there's cars driving down the interstate because they look like they're about to fall apart with the amount of rust that's on them. In Maine, if you have a rear windshield wiper, it better work. If you have... You don't oh, need one, but if you have one, it If you work. have one, it better work. If you have, um, what's it called? Power windows. Power windows. The power windows need to work. Uh, it, they're just everything. They're really picky on a lot of stuff. Which is okay. This is the state we live in. This is what we have to do. But because inspection was coming up, and we need to get inspected every year, we took it to get looked at. It needed work. So we took it in on Monday, thought we'd have it back that day, but no, we had to leave it. They did the work, it all came out good, and we went to pick it up today and to get the, um, we had to go pay for the registration. Yeah, excise tax. Excise registration. tax registration, all of that stuff. So anyway, hold on, I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna grab my Josiah cam it's over okay. here. All the boys are gonna see the pics in it. I, stopped I know, I'm gonna leave that there though so we can watch him. Josiah cam. Um, so anyway, we went and did that. Virginia and Samuel drove home in the other vehicle because we had to take a vehicle to go pick up the vehicle and Virginia drove home with him. He's very excited because in the state of Maine, he can now ride in the front seat. Woohoo! Anyway, and Abigail's really excited because she's counting down the days until she turns eight in March when she gets out of her car seat. So in Maine, we have to ride in car seats forever. Okay, so then... Does she know it's July? She does. Oh. She's very excited to get out of that car seat. So anyway... They came home and I don't know what you did. Did you do what something? What did you do? I read a book on biblical counseling and I had, oh, and I made coffee. And I had Samuel read from Polyface Farms, Joel Salatin, on the computer in the living room. So I sat with him. Because Joel Salatin, everything he wants to do is illegal. 
Just so yes. you know. So I so. thought you say no in the living room. Because I figured the Polyface Farm site was a safe website. So I got up a page for him to read. But I figured I'd just stay in the room with him. Because we just tried to be cautious with computer stuff. So that's what I did. Sat in the yeah. living room with him while he read a book. And he did... You did your survival thing, right? Yeah. He did a survival thing before that. I so he worked I haven't that yet. We have a couple <laughs> videos to upload. So anyway, while I was sitting on the end of the pads... Josiah's pads that he crawls on. I deleted pictures from my phone today. I still had our 40 minute video. The second part of the marriage and courtship video we did the other day was still on my phone and over 3000 pictures because Malachi has taken my camera like with permission, takes my camera to take pictures sometimes like of a flower or something and holds down the button to do the little burst. It will and stop so, at 50. Yeah, but there was a lot of pictures to get rid of. Or something. Whatever it was. I got rid of a lot of pictures. I have to do that more regularly because I forget to take pictures off my phone. Until there's 3,000. Until there's 3,000. Well, there was even more than that. Yeah, Those were the ones I got rid of. Okay, so we did, we came home. Mark moved the vehicles around because um, we're, we have a big bus that takes diesel and diesel's expensive right now. So we moved everything back to the van to be able to use it for the next few days. Then we came inside and had lunch. Oh, we had leftovers and potato chunks. It was really good. Then we did our Bible time. Oh, Josiah crawled again. And then we did our Bible time. And in Bible today, we did... Do you Joshua remember? Do you remember? Five. Yeah, and they weren't allowed to eat... Circumcising. No, before that, Chompity they couldn't chompy. eat manna anymore. Because God gave them manna exactly as long as they needed the it. circumcision part, but yeah. I thought it was the start of it. No, I thought they were circumcised <laughs> first. Hold on, we gotta find out right now. <laughs> Research. <laughs> Research. <laughs> Research on our phones. Joshua 5. I have a Bible app. Oh, sorry. They got circumcised first. And oh, then... Okay. Sorry. you, you got to clean yourself up before... Oh, I, I was thinking it was the end, but no. Jesus comes at the end, so you got to wait. Okay, so first... Wait, were... we were in Joshua. How did Jesus come in Joshua? You have to explain this one. Okay, we were in Joshua 5. First, they got circumcised because all those people that were supposed to get circumcised... Remember Moses circumcised people back in Egypt? His wife was like, hey, you better circumcise people. Chuck, Chuck. Well, they were like, wait, we haven't circumcised anyone. So everyone has to get circumcised today. So they actually did it. I have to tell you the name of the place. Hold on. The name of the place is... Gibeath. Gibeath. You got to make sure you make those sounds. And that actually means hill of foreskins, right? Something like that. We were hoping... <laughs> <laughs> that they named it after this happened because if there's a place you know of that's called Hill of Foreskins, I would advise you to not go there. Just letting you know, it's probably not the most pleasant place to be. So they got their flint knives ready and they circumcised those guys there. And then, don't worry, they waited until they healed before they went and did anything else. So then, the manna thing. Can you huh? either face the camera or get off? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm, like, sitting here with my <laughs> back turned to the camera. So, anyway, they circumcised all the people who weren't circumcised, which was pretty much everyone. So, then they remained there. They healed. Then they, the people of Israel went to Gilgal, and they kept the fat Passover, which was a good thing to do, from the produce of the land. And as soon, the day after they had eaten all the produce of the land, God stopped giving them manna. Remember the manna they'd been eating for, like, 38 years that God had been giving them? This whole time, Every he suddenly day. stopped giving it to them. And okay. so we were talking about, there were a couple different things that came up with that. Mm -hmm. We were talking about how, I was mentioning, how mm -hmm. you never know when is the last of something. So, like, I don't think this is going to be soon, but I'm nursing Gideon right now. He doesn't eat a whole lot of table foods. But at some point, he's going to stop nursing. He's going to just want to stop nursing. Unless I force him to, he's going to stop nursing at some point the last time that you help your child take a shower you know because they get themselves ready to do it um the last time that you i don't know there's like all kinds of things last time you have to feed them with a spoon before they start eating themselves the last time that you have to you know prepare their plate for them because then they can do it just those things as a mom that you think they feel like they're going to go on forever and no. there's going to be one day that they're suddenly not going to grab your hand to walk across the parking lot anymore. And it's going to be okay, but it's going to be weird. And you're not going to know that you were 
not going to have that again. So that's what I was thinking of. That was the sappy mom thing that I was thinking of. What was your thing you were if thinking of? If we just of? keep having babies, then it just never ends. Yeah, because then I'm just going to take your babies and Naomi's babies and all of those, and then I'll just keep having, being able to do that. Maybe not the nursing thing. <laughs> I mean, I would nurse your baby for you if you needed me to, but I need not to planning to. Okay. <laughs> so what did you learn about the manna thing? I was thinking of it in the sense of being content with the provision that God supplies at different times. And it may look different in different areas, or sorry, different seasons of life. Like for a while, they should have been happy with the manna and not been wanting cucumbers and garlic and leeks and everything else. Um, but was that all that they mentioned in meat? Or cucumbers, garlic, whatever it was. Whatever they wanted. They should have been content with the manna. And then when they were able to eat the produce of the land, they shouldn't have been wanting to go back to the manna. They should well, have been happy with whatever God provided. Remember the when they had the manna and they were like, but God, we want quail. And God's like, fine, I'll give you enough quail to come out your nostrils. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So they yeah. should have just been happy with the manna. So being content in whatever God has for provision, um, whether it be what ministry opportunities he's provided or what financial means he's provided, um, but being content with the provision and not wanting something different. Which parent you get stuck with. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> and Mark, what did you learn about the manna? Um, He's not going to tell you. About the manna? I don't know. Sam or another part from that. discussion about well, what if we could find the Ark of the Covenant, how stale would the manna be now? <laughs> he wanted to know if he could try it. And the Bible says that it tasted like honey. So let's just eat honey. I don't need thousands of year old... Whatever. Hi. <laughs> I'm running back. What did you learn about what manna? What did you learn about the manna? That's what we're talking about manna? right now. Um, that it place. disappeared the day after Passover? Okay. When they started eating the fruit of the land? Yep. Was there anything you should learn from that? Um, what was it that you said? Was it that God... What did I say? He provided the provision as long as they needed it? Was that you? Mm-hmm. Is that what you said? Here's the thing. Who, who made the stuff grow in the place that they were going to? God. God. Yeah, so he's still the one providing. I think we, we can tend to think that because we don't see the miracle on the checkbook, that, you know, like the numbers don't make sense, mm -hmm. that we think We've had a lot that of that's those not times. miraculous anymore. But. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. But God's provision is miraculous. Like all that stuff you're on in that garden out there. It's all because Virginia did it. All because of Virginia. Nope. Yeah, we, no. can, we can till the ground, we can plant the seed, the so, uh, the seed in the soil, and we can water it, and we can do whatever, but God makes it grow. So, so that's still miraculous. It's right. daily miraculous. So people who haven't followed us long don't know our lives. We, at one point, traveled around the country working with different churches. And there were times that we had to decide whether we were going to buy groceries or buy gas. We were that low on money, and God always provided. God a few times provided by giving us corn dogs. Or a envelope full of money to be split up with the ministry partners we were with. Those like twenty-five um, pound things of roast beef. Oh there yeah, you may, know the big ones they yeah. cut at the deli. We got big ones of those. There may have been suggestion of setting up a statue of a corn dog so that we can remind future generations of the story of corn dogs. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, what I was gonna say is, probably won't do that. It was actually easier to see God's provision during those times than it was to see God's provision when Mark had a job that he worked 40 hours and we we were expecting the 40 hours worth of money um, because Mark worked. Not because it was God, but because Mark worked. So, I mean, it was because of God. I'm saying it was our bad mindset to think it was what Mark deserved um, for his 40 hours of work. So it was just interesting to see that it was easier to trust God in the times that we had nothing than in the times we thought things were coming to us, right? Okay, anything else? Mm. Okay, so the end of that chapter, Jesus shows up. So Joshua is walking to wherever they're supposed to go now. Jericho, I think. Jericho. Towards Jericho, yeah. And he sees somebody with a sword in his hand, and he says to the person, are you on our side or, or on the adversaries, yeah. right? Something You're like that. You for us or for our adversaries? adversaries. And the guy with the sword says, I'm the commander of Yahweh's, Yahweh's army. army. Is that how he no. said it? I'm the commander of Yahweh's army. No. You got this wrong. I'm actually nice. I'm the commander of <laughs> Yahweh's army. Take off your shoes. This is holy ground. And Joshua bowed down and worshipped him. And so, took off his shoes like he was told to. There is the question. 
is whether or not we should I'm wear sorry. shoes to church. That did come up, but that's not what we were talking yeah. about. <laughs> shoes in church? So I, I don't know because I don't like anything. shoes. <laughs> so um, what we were talking about is someone, one of the kids, asked the question about could this juice be like an archangel, like Michael or whatever. But we were saying that Joshua actually worshipped him. Which, when you see other parts of the Bible where people try to bow down to worship an angel, the angel's like, no, get up, I'm just an angel. Um, and also, it said that the ground was holy, and angels don't make ground holy. Because there's other times we see angels show up, and they don't tell people to take their shoes off. Right. Like, Mary had Sodom the angel show up to her. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Sodom and Gomorrah. But no, no, I was thinking, like, Noah angel. And his wife. Or... Yeah. When the angels show okay. up, nobody tells them to take their shoes off. So, so the only other life. time you yeah. can think, of, I can think about it. Is the burning bush. And who's leading, who's the captain of the, of the army of Yahweh? Jesus. Not army. a person. Jesus. He's got not that a person, horse not an angel. I yeah. Think it's Jesus. Anyway. So, anyway, that's what we were talking about today. So, that was our Bible time. It was really good. And then after Bible time, I did school with some of the little ones. These, the big girls, did their school stuff, which I'm actually talking about someone with, and we'll get to that in a minute. And then we were getting re we went outside to play for a little bit, but Virginia was getting supper ready because we had a friend who's been training about two hours south of us, and he actually lives three hours north of us, and he had to be at training all week, but was picking something up at our house for his wife, like big things that we couldn't transport to him. So um, we went, like he stopped here, we made dinner for him, and then he went on his way. So it was good to see him. And we'll get to see them next week, so that's very exciting. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. We, yeah. What do we have we, for supper? We had taco salads. Do we supper. need a light on yet? Can people still see us? Or are we yeah. getting to the point of dark? We should probably turn the light on. All right. Let's see what the light looks like. Ready? Just a second. Ah, oh, that's a okay. fan. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay. Terrible. Go ahead sorry. and see if you can figure yeah. out what's going oh, on. Sorry. Okay. So what we were talking about. Oh, sorry. Then he left. I finished giving bath and showers. Someone's looking for an ice pack, I think. I finished giving baths and showers to the little people and then we prayed and we got ready for bed. Um, that's where we are. Then we started talking about education. So I got a message from a friend that I'm talking to right now. She's on a group that I'm on and she was asking me what we're doing for homeschooling because she has been homeschooling for a long time and just feels like she's hit a wall for this fall and was just wondering what we did. So I was sharing with her about how we don't do traditional schooling. We do very much child-led schooling. Um, and so we do math books up to a certain age. And that's really all that we do that's really traditional. But we do Bible a lot for memory. We do... Um, we cover the subjects. We cover all the subjects, just not what you would think of as like, okay, so here's their fourth grade history book. We do like, like Samuel has listened to a whole bunch of history lectures, which are actually for high school students, but he's listened to them in like fourth through sixth grade. So yes, they are. He's, he's listened to them like fourth through sixth grade. Um, we watch like things that are made for high school or adult um, lectures on like science, like creation science topics. Um, we watch those as a family. So I can't really say, here's what we do as our science curriculum, because we don't have, like, this is the book for this grade level. So I will say we have never done a traditional English class of here's your 180 lessons for this year on English. We read a lot. We talk about, like, oh, did you notice the question mark? Like, my kids all understand what a question in a story looks like. Um, and when they and learn to read, they learn all the punctuation and grammar and things like that that yeah, they need. Like the, like the basics of like capitalization and punctuation. And I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. Then when we get to foreign language, we dive more into the like nouns, sub, and well, we, we do like the nouns and stuff, but like subject, object, conjugation, verb, <laughs> conjugation, all that stuff. We tend to do more when we get to learning a foreign language. Um, so like when I did ASL, I find it a very easy language because you don't have to conjugate. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday I run, today I run, tomorrow I run will. <laughs> it's really easy. <laughs> tomorrow I run sort again. Of <laughs> uh you have a different conjugation for every tense and form. 
<laughs> she went with the more complicated. Virginia is now trying her hand at Spanish. Is it harder to learn than ASL? You use your hands in Spanish? Actually, <laughs> this, this or today I said something in Spanish to Naomi, but I signed it. <laughs> um, Trilingual, okay. Yeah, so, so I think Spanish will be harder when I get into the other stuff, but I just started, so it's still like the greetings and days of the week and stuff like that. So that's that's not too hard. Do you know um, the days of the week yet? Lunes, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Lunes, Wednesday, Martes, Miércoles, Jueves. It's a V I E, but it's um, Viernes, Sabado, Domingo. Yes. You need to work on your accent, though. <laughs> yes. So, Naomi has been, sorry, my friend whose husband was here just wrote to me, so I was asking her if he's home yet. Um, so, probably not, but getting close. Getting close. So, anyway, um, Naomi started taking Spanish multiple, two years ago? Last year? I'm not sure. I don't know. She's taken multiple years. So Virginia took four semesters of college ASL right. in one year. Like nine months. Naomi, I think, is doing her fourth year of high school Spanish in two years. <laughs> two and a half years. I don't know. We don't do school years. So if, like right now, Abigail's working through a second grade math book. If she finishes the second grade math book next month, we'll start the third grade math book. But it's not that we're still doing the second grade math book because we started at the start of the... Right. We started the second grade math book. I'm trying to think. We got the first grade math book in Tennessee. And she did that whole thing in about two months because I just wanted to make sure she had learned all the concepts. So she's on the second grade math book, but she started it in like April. So like we don't start at the regular timing, I guess is what we're saying. We just keep going. Um, sure. Yeah. So anyway, he's not close to home. Sorry. She sent me a message and he's not close to home. He had to stop at April. So we overwhelmed um, him. <laughs> just kidding. He has more kids than they're in this house anyway. <laughs> It's very, it's very hard to overwhelm a guy with 14 kids. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway. Um, so, we just don't do the traditional schooling. So, the, I don't find it a huge benefit to teach my second grader to figure out what the noun is. Because they don't have a hook to hook it on. Or whatever you want to call it. I've heard it talked about all different ways. But... The girls actually have a reason that they need to learn what nouns are so that they can learn the other language. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense to them in English because most of the English that you speak is not because you were taught what a noun was in a book. It was because you hear how people Mm -hmm. speak and you speak it that way. A baby talks in like, like not Gideon, but like Malachi might talk about himself in third person. And then he realizes that, oh, I need to say I Mm -hmm. instead of Malachi. Or like saying, oh, that's him. That's his thing. That you just learn that through basic hearing language, like your heart language, your first spoken language. You learn it through that. You don't learn it because you read in a book that, oh, I have to say his hat when I'm talking about the hat that belongs to that boy. You just like Mm -hmm. it becomes it's second nature. For almost everyone, I'm not I'm not saying there's exceptions to the rule, but most people don't need to know those things to speak their language correctly. But mm-hmm. we see how we speak language is different in different parts of the country. And, like, America teaches English to their students. We but, teach a very poor form of English. <laughs> yeah. but, but if you're in Maine or Texas, you're going to hear different things about how people talk in even different words and different phrases and all of that. And we picked it up from who we live around and that's influenced our vocabulary it's not just what we read in a book so virginia says y'all on a All regular basis she also says and either and neither where we say either and either either and neither neither. And neither. neither neither one of us say the, the phrase but she does yeah. but naomi She's the other woman. day 
said fixin to do something. Which is oh, from yeah. our Tennessee I was friends. Just, Gideon looked like, like he was crawling towards the edge of something. So I'm like, oh, he's fixing a clock. What did I just... <laughs> so that's not a term that's used in Maine, but because we give our children lots of different experiences, we're able to give them experiences with traveling, they know how other people in other parts of the country talk. So they say fixin' sometimes. Or, I just y'all. Just ruined me. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, so I don't teach school in the traditional way because most of it is based on a school system that is meant to teach 20 children in a classroom with the teacher being able to keep her own sanity and somewhat keep control of the children in the classroom. I went to college for one year for special education. It taught me nothing on how to educate my own children in my home. It didn't even teach me how to teach my special education child in my home. It taught me how to keep control in the classroom. It taught me how to write IEPs for students. It taught me how to write a lesson plan. As a teacher at a homeschooling I do not need to do any of those things I do not need to submit my like we do a portfolio review at the end of the year but I do not need to submit lesson plans I don't need to say so we are planning to study the book if you give a mouse a cookie this year and we're going to make cookies and we're going to give them to the, our friends and we're going to write a story about making cookies mm-hmm. and we're going to learn the science behind the chemistry of putting a baking powder in the cookie like we're not going to do any of that because I can do all that on the spur of the moment I don't have to have it written months in advance, um, even weeks in advance. We or can, approved by somebody else. Or approved by somebody else. I do what is interesting. So the other day, we had one of our kids, so one of our Facebook friends wrote that her and her husband got to go to the Biltmore Mansion for a um, work thing. He, they got to have dinner at the Biltmore Mansion, which is a really cool place. So we mentioned to the kids about the Biltmore man- Mansion, and they were like, oh, what's that? So we looked up a video and pictures of the Biltmore Mansion, mm-hmm. and that made them ask some more questions, so the next day we researched the White House. Yeah? yeah. Oh, okay. She bumped me. I didn't know she had to tell me something. So the next day we researched the White House. Um, a couple weeks ago, I randomly picked a book off the library shelf, so how I get books at the library, I know the library is a scary place, some people don't want to go there, and I get that, but I go to the library and I pick the books for the kids, so I got this one, uh, I get like one row of books just from the picture books and I just look through every book on that row. Like I just pick one shelf and say, I'm gonna look through this shelf and I um, look and find books that either I know or books that look of interest. I read the inside cover, I give it a quick flip through. If there's a book that I think might be questionable, I either leave it at the library or look at it before I give it to the kids here at home. But anyway, that's how we get books. And one of the books I randomly picked off the shelf was called Locomotive by somebody. I forget who it was by now. But it was a really interesting book. It talked about all the sounds of the steam locomotive and how they built the railroad and all of that stuff. And so later that day, we um, read more about locomotives. We watched videos about the sounds of the steam locomotives. Like we just listened to the train whistles and things. We watched Music Man. Where they Not use, the whole movie. No, no, no. Just the one we part. watched the song, <laughs> Music Man, where they're talking about, um, they're trying to sell things in the different towns and how people don't want to buy them and the cash market has gone up and all of this mm-hmm. stuff and they're using their voices to try to inf- like mimic imitate. the train yeah. sounds, imitate the train sounds. Um, and they're like rocking their bodies so they're sitting on a stage but it looks like they're moving to the train. Um, and so we just talked went into a little study about locomotives. I didn't have to write any of that down. None of it was planned. I didn't even think of doing it until after we read the book that I had picked up days before at the library with no plan of like, this is gonna be a lesson plan. It just was interesting. Um, What? She's not purposely bumping me without anything. Sorry, every time I accidentally bump her, she looks at me like, what do you have to say to me? (laughs) So we very much want to give our children experiences and go by what they're interested in. Are you okay? Do you want someone else to take the camera? Daddy's falling asleep behind the camera. (laughs) Um, So we're very much interested, like go by what the kids are interested in. So this year, Naomi is studying Spanish four because she had been doing, when she finished the rest of the Spanish lessons, they didn't have Spanish four out yet. So that's out now. So she's doing Spanish four. 
Um, and she writes to and sometimes messages, voice message, voice. right, people that are Spanish speakers to improve her language skills. Yeah. She is doing guitar because she's interested in it, and she has taught herself through, what, Justin guitar? Was that the first thing you went on? She did a little bit of Justin guitar when she first got her guitar, which was given to her, her by a friend. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I moved away from the camera. Um, and then she went on Justin guitar, which gave her some basics. And now she likes the band Adam's Road, and so she watches them all the time to see how Joey is playing the chords. Um, right? <laughs> is that what? It's? Yeah. How Joey's playing the chords on the song. Um, so that's something she's interested in. Um, right now for math, she's doing a bunch of stuff with grocery budgets, and so I give her different little challenges. So right now, explain your grocery, what you're doing right now. Because um, uh, Mammy doesn't even know about this yet. She's going to watch the video and be like, Hello. Oh, yeah. So um, Mammy wants to eat a low-sodium diet, so I'm figuring out what foods are low in sodium. And? and the Huh? And what else are you doing with that? And, Just like, meals to make and the prices of those things and, like, how to make the meals and all that. Yeah. So she's looking up, like, a low-sodium meal would be, I'm just going to make up things, bread and eggs and avocado, to, you know, to make avocado toast. And all of that together would be a total of 400 micrograms or whatever of sodium. Um, and so to put together a day's worth of meals that would be under the 2,000 micrograms that are told to eat it's on a low sodium diet. diet. Milligrams, sorry. On a low sodium diet. So um, she's doing that as her grocery. Sometimes we'll do like making, you know, if you found this great deal on potatoes, what are meals you can make with it and pricing out things. Um, finding parts per unit and all of that stuff. Um, so I'm trying to think what else she's doing. She really likes um, reading. So some of her history is done just through reading books like missionary biographies and things like that. She's doing, um, like she listens to Bible lectures from different people. She memorizes Bible. She does science through the science things we were talking about the other day. The, um, what are they called? Like creation science lectures that we like to listen to. So she learns about like social studies and world religions and stuff by li debates we listen to. Um, we're all learning geography through learning about missionaries in different countries. Um, yeah. Is that the big world map up on the dining room wall? Yeah. That we and so usually Abigail or another one of the younger ones will be told a country that they have to find on the map and then we'll have like a picture of a missionary from there and um, read an update from that missionary, like a message or an update. Yeah. And Virginia, the other day, uh, she's not in school anymore, but she made challah bread. Um, we had never made it before, so she made it kind of as a fun fun thing to teach them about that, about Jewish culture. Um, and so, I don't know. We as a family just spend a lot of time together, and we talk a lot. So as news stories come up, like the whole Roe versus Wade thing that came up, we talked about that from a lot of different perspectives. Our through a biblical worldview. Sorry, I was going to say our breakfast discussion today was an entire history from Catholics and Methodists and so many different things about um, godparents. Anglicans, Orthodox. Anglicans. Yeah, about godparents and where did that come from and is that something that as a church is, we have a practice for, um, which we don't. We understand why some people might do it, but it it's a pragmatic response to things. Um, and yeah, that was our whole discussion this morning. So back to the, why were people jumping on an elephant? Um, CBS news showed a story from Thailand where a mama elephant and a baby had fallen in a pit. They got them out, but the mama elephant needed CPR. And so there were two men jumping on the elephant to perform CPR on her. And I guess it worked because she got up and walked away with her baby or she got tired of two men jumping on her and got up and walked away. I'm not really sure, but that's how you do CPR on an elephant. Um, so these types of things, like I've never thought about what you would do if you found an elephant that needed CPR, but now I know. Um, always educating yourself. I guess like a lot of the things we watch with the kids, we don't have TV, but we do watch YouTube with the kids and a lot of the things we watch are like 
um, Smarter Every Day by Dustin Sandlin. Sandlin. He's a rocket scientist who loves science and talks about it in a um, very easy way to understand about all kinds of different science. Watch his video about the backwards bike. He put a bike that if you turned it left, it went right and did a study on how long it would take your body to reconnect to that. So that was pretty cool. Um, <laughs> they're whispering behind the camera. Um, so that was just really interesting. That's the type of things we watch as a family is these different shows that teach the kids things. We don't spend a lot of time watching just any movie out there. Um, we'd rather watch something that we can learn about animals or whatever. What? Abigail is actually listening to you right now. <laughs> and as we passed, uh -huh. um, the, I was like, Daddy, that's your wifey. He's like waving at you on the screen. <laughs> so, um, for Naomi, not Naomi, Abigail watches these videos as she goes to sleep. So hi, Abigail, if you're watching. So anyway, um, yeah. So we were just talking tonight about education because um, Virginia is taking a online class. Hold on, Virginia. I'm going to turn the camera to you. Oh, okay. Sorry. I should probably sit up. I've been laying down on mommy's... I was laying down on the camera. Um, so I'm taking Hillsdale College online um, courses. But you're not even a student anymore. Why are you I doing know, that? I'm not. It's a college class and I'm 19, so I guess that makes it okay. Um, so right now I'm taking... K through 12 education theory and practice. And so I haven't done it for a while. I, so I actually did two lectures today because I had time. I watched one while I made dinner. Um, and so the first one was about phonics and writing and the, um, what was I gonna say? Sorry, the um, different things that come into writing, like pre, sorry, reading pre-reading and then reading like learning to read and then reading to learn and having a language rich environment where kids are introduced to the alphabet and have alphabet recognition knowing how to manipulate sounds in the English language and things like that and then up to the point of comprehension and bringing in knowledge that you already have to further understand what you're reading things like that and then the second one was about history and how we learn history and there's stories throughout um, the world that get passed down through culture that show principle and values and teach the history of that people. So like, like the stories of Bible that we learned the other day about the rock. The right. Rocks. So like the monument that they just set up from the rivers, I'm sorry, from the rivers, from the stones that they took out of the <laughs> river Jordan. Um, to be a monument to their children like and to so that, all people, and to all people. Um, but that when their children would ask why are these stones here it would be to a chance to tell the things that God had done for them and that all people may fear the name of Yahweh um, so learning history and learning the stories of the that show the principles and values of those who come before us and encourage those good values in the present generation. Okay. So that was Very history. Okay, so you'll notice that she said she listened to her history lecture while she was making supper. In our household, we don't necessarily put schooling apart from our everyday life. So I do have a time in the afternoon, it used to be in the morning, but now it's in the afternoon, where I sit down with the little ones and we, the little ones that like like workbooks, we'll get out a workbook and do a workbook together or I'll practice some reading with one of the other kids and it's a time that I'm not scheduled to do something else that I have that time. But it doesn't mean that I never do it another time of the day. It's just that is... <laughs> I don't like how the lighting was on your face. No, it's okay. Okay, so um, it's not that I never do it other times or that the kids think that schooling only happens during that set time in the afternoon. It's just that's a time when I usually have the ability to sit down and do those types of things, like um, set aside time. But we, a lot of times, will listen to a history lecture while we're drawing pictures or will like the big people will be listening to a sermon or a science lecture or a history lecture like we count sermons and bible as part of our schooling so i can't 
like it's not a different time but um we'll be listening to something like that while the kids are playing building blocks around us um there's i don't know in the car we'll listen to podcasts about things um history or science or whatever or we'll read books as a family that are a missionary biography we don't have this is schooling time and we get done with schooling time so we can go have fun we our everyday life we're trying to surround ourselves with learning all the time I don't know if that makes sense but we're we don't have it separate because I know some families that very much try to make school homeschool look like school and so we sit down and do school from 8 to 12 and we sit with our books but then the kids expect that when 12 o'clock comes they get to go play on their iPads or watch movies or whatever and that's not an expectation our kids have because all of our day is revolving around actually like learning and studying and growing together. Does that make sense? It's not that we're always doing school. Our kids have a lot of chance to have free play outside doing things, but like the outside free play today, Samuel's very interested in outdoor stuff. And so he's reading through a survival book. And so he went outside and built a tent. He's in his room. Um, that boy right over there. And right now, while he's sitting in his bed reading, he's reading a book about war. Yeah, could you explain? What, what time period is it? Uh, what war is it? Um, sorry, I forget. Um, he's further along in the story. So. Um, is it French and Russia War. Oh, because it's not in English, that's why I can't remember the name of it. I'm it's, not sure how to pronounce it. It's M-A-H-R-A-T-T-A. Okay. So it's a different war than one of the standard wars that he usually learns about. He's reading a G.A. Henty book. But anyway, he's very interested in learning about soldiers and war and that type of thing, but also very interested in survival stuff. So his outdoor play today was taking his siblings, and they got a rope, and they got a blanket, and they got tent pegs and a hammer, and they were setting up a tent. Oh, they, they had left a... J.L. home so nobody died. <laughs> They had a blanket, they had a pillow, they had a little cot, and they were setting it up, and then they would take it down, and they'd set it up again, seeing which way worked better and that type of thing. That's their play, but it's learning. Um, they're, not, they're not sitting around playing World of Warcraft or those types of games. Like they're actually doing um, real-life learning, I guess is what I would say. But they also, I mean, they do just play like everyday kids. Like they had bikes out earlier today. But I want to see a profitable. Were you attempting to hide? Yes. Because you weren't listen. hiding very so well. So now he was, <laughs> he was asking if he could turn on Answers in Genesis where he listens to science lectures or what they call Answers News where they talk about news articles and how it has a biblical perspective, like the biblical perspective on the news article. So anyway, um, so we want the kids to not see school as this is a hard thing that we have to go learn and do this and then there's the fun world um, we want them to have an attitude that learning is fun and so we do those things a lot does that make sense okay um so what the one hen two ducks three squawking geese had to do with anything i have no idea it is what I remember learning in eighth grade. The other things I can tell you I learned in eighth grade, semper ubi sub ubi is Latin for always wear underwear. I learned how to sing part of um, O Come All Ye Faithful in Latin. Let's think of what else I did in eighth grade. I watched the O.J. Simpson trial. <laughs> oh, that might have been seventh grade. I watched the O.J. Simpson trial while I was in public school. We watched the verdict come out. Um, yeah, this is what I remember from school. We read... Um, Edgar Allan Poe, who's a very weird man that I do not want my children reading. Um, I did learn how to sew a pillow, and I won an award for home ec. Um, but right after I finished school, like right after I finished seventh and eighth grade, there was no longer home ec programs um, in our schools. I graduated in 2001, so that explains how old I am. I'm about to be 40. Um, trying to remember what else I learned in eighth grade. I don't really remember what I, oh, I learned the word cognizant and plethora. I think those were the two, yeah. The one teacher always had vocabulary words around the side. I'm really struggling to tell you what I learned in seventh and eighth grade. 
I was in the same side of the school, so I'm trying to remember, like, in those classrooms, what did I learn? Um, a lot of stuff that is not useful to my everyday life. I want my kids to learn things that are going to benefit them in the future. And I know that when I was in seventh and eighth grade, I did English class. And I can't tell you how that has profited me now. That's nothing against my teachers. That's against the actual, like, way that public schooling is set up. So I think that's enough for tonight. If you have questions, please ask them because we love discussing homeschooling. We love discussing how you can give your children a biblical worldview on the things they're learning. And we love discussing how you can be teaching your children through the things that they really love. I don't go by what the schools teach at different ages. If kids are supposed to learn about dolphins in second grade and my kid is really interested in frogs, you better believe we're gonna be learning about frogs. Because if your kid has no interest in the subject, they're not going to learn the information. But if your kid is very interested, they will learn it. That's why the girls have gone through their ASL and their Spanish classes so fast, and Naomi learning guitar and the way she's learning and everything, because they're actually interested in it. They want to learn more, so they push themselves. It's not mommy saying, this is what you have to get done today. Um, so. Hey, thanks. I got a mug cake from my favorite daughter. My other daughter's behind the screen. She just didn't make me the mug cake. <laughs> um, so anyway, that's, that was our, our thing tonight. Um, again, if you have any questions, let us know. We like talking about education because education isn't about filling up. Oh, another interesting thing. <laughs> 46 and a half minutes. In. That's okay. I read something the other day and it was talking about the rat race and how people kind of go through life, and this isn't Christians, it's just kind of people in general. People go through life trying to get out of the dead end jobs, trying to get to a job that they actually love, trying to get to a position in life where they feel that they can actually enjoy life and get to make decisions for themselves, not just doing what's expected of them. And it was saying how much is public education, um, public school, indoctrination camps, whatever you want to call them, how much is that like the rat race for kids? I have to sit here whenever the teacher tells me to and do exactly what they tell me to, putting the right color on this piece of paper, making my letter exactly the right way. And we strive for perfection in our schooling. So like we don't necessarily give grades for our schooling. We just keep working until it is accomplished. Um, so like my kids don't get to pass with a 70. If they don't understand the math lesson, we do the math lesson again and we give them more problems. So if it takes one child three weeks to totally understand addition, we then go on to the next subject. But if it takes the next child six months to get addition, they continue doing addition because they're never going to actually do well in the rest of math if they can't understand what adding two plus two means. It's not just being able to say two plus two equals four. It's knowing that if I have two fish and two fish, it makes four fish. If I have two apples and two apples, it makes four apples. If I have two apples and two oranges, I have four fruits. Because there are a lot of kids who can fill out the two plus two equals four, but if you hand them two objects and tell them you need four of them, they don't know how to get there because they don't know how to apply it to real world application. They just know how to fill in workbook pages. So we keep going until the child has actually mastered that thing. And for each kid, it's gonna look a little different, like um, handwriting. Handwriting isn't something that I keep going until the child has an A that looks like a computer screen A. But like with addition, they need to know enough that they can easily find the answer and not have to go to Google and say, Google, how do I add two plus two? They need to know what the concept is. Even if they have to figure it out, they need to know what the concept is and be able to translate it to something. But I'm also not going to push my children to learn geometry by just sitting down with a book and saying, okay, here's how you find a right angle. Geometry is gonna be learned by knowing that in real life, daddy wants to have them make a birdhouse and so to be able to find how the roof needs to be they have to learn the pythagorean theorem because you need to know this measurement and this measurement to get this measurement um again public school bad here's how i was turned the, taught the pythagorean theorem i live here 
my wife lives here, which we all knew he'd gotten in trouble that weekend for beating up his wife. I have this distance and this distance. What's the quickest distance to get to my wife? That's how I was taught Pythagorean theorem. Don't want my kids learning that. So I want them to learn on a birdhouse how we find Pythagorean theorem. So that's where we are in our education. I want my kids to learn a biblical worldview and I don't want them to be indoctrinated into the Marxist socialist community that's being taught out there right now along with the accept everyone just as they are and anyone who wants to call themselves a dinosaur is allowed to call themselves a dinosaur. Because I went to school with a kid who thought he was a dinosaur and he used to hurt people by trying to jump on their backs and he got in trouble. I don't want that kid to not get in trouble for hurting people because he thinks he's a dinosaur and we just all have to accept it. Wow, that just went crazy. Okay, <laughs> so now you know my thoughts on things. This is why we do public education. I mean, home education. It's getting late. I'm gonna go eat my mug cake, but <laughs> that is our controversial view on education in our society. Why you should home educate. I haven't even watched it yet, but I would say you should go watch a movie that's out right now about homeschooling by Kirk Cameron. Mm -hmm. It looks really good and a lot of people have talked about it. Homeschool Revolution. There's also something called Homeschool Rocked. Mm -hmm. That's a movie. I have not watched it, but I listen to their podcast and it's very good with lots of people that I like to listen to. And if you want... Oh, go ahead. I just showed the... the clock if you can read that clock with roman numerals and an analog clock you might actually be home educated <laughs> <laughs> um if you're looking for good people to listen to about why you should home educate or um home education like encouragement israel wayne um his wife brooke wayne rachel carmen and davis carmen um they are they own not own apology they of apology of science whatever it's called steward apology of steward science, apology yeah. of science. <laughs> um so they are both very encouraging they if you listen to um rachel she was not going to be a homeschooling mom that was not that was not going to happen and now she just graduated her last student and she is so encouraging to listen to and she always points you back to god another really good one is rachel zwayne and easy Zwayne, but I think it's Rachel who normally does. Mm -hmm. Yes, Rachel Carmen encourages you with chocolate. If you go see her, she'll give you chocolate. I don't know if she always does. She gave us chocolate. Um, so there's just a lot of really good speakers out there. Vodi Bauckham has one. Um, if you, it's what's it called? Children of Caesar. Children of Caesar. If you send your children to Caesar, don't expect them. Don't be surprised when they come back as Romans. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're doing in our school systems right now. We're sending our children. And most of our churches. Most of our churches are saying the world is going crazy. The world is not a place we want to be. It's terrible for Christians and everything. I'm still sending my children off to the government school. The government is bad. Let them educate my children. That makes no sense. No sense whatsoever. Um, if you want your kids to learn things, there's lots of ways for them to learn them outside of the public school system. Mm -hmm. Especially when they're young, because your children are not meant to be missionaries in the school system. Your children need to be encouraged to understand what the Bible says and to grow in the Lord. Um, I am a Christian. I've been a Christian for 25 years, 30 years, 25 mm -hmm. years, 25 years. And I can't do math this late at night. <laughs> 25 25ish years I've been a Christian and I cannot imagine getting thrown into a whole classroom full of other children who are being taught by the one person that they're all supposed to be listening to go to school listen to your teacher they're being taught by that teacher that God isn't real that we all came from stardust our relatives are monkeys and broccoli and we're supposed to be kind to people because that's what the universe tells us to do or something like that. None of that makes any sense. But we're sending our kids saying, I know that you're maybe not even a Christian or if you are a very baby Christian and I'm expecting you to go in there and be a missionary and tell those kids and the teacher that you're supposed to listen to why they're wrong. But I would never go out on a street corner. But I wouldn't go out on a street corner. Gospel. Tomorrow, anyone who, near here who's watching this video, tomorrow we're going out on the street corner and giving people gospel tracts. If you're scared to do that, imagine how scared your child is walking into a 
place where they are not allowed to disagree with anybody. Because if they disagree with people, they get made fun of, they get sent to the principal's office, they get sent home with detentions and things like that because they don't follow the system. So anyway, okay, that got spicy at the end. We'll have to talk more about that later, but we will see you guys next time on Hurting Little Cats to the Glory of God. Bye.